Hey, what is up guys? It is Control and today I am bringing you guys a video on my top 5 underrated cards of The Witchwood. These are basically cards that kind of slip by the cracks and I kind of just overlook myself uh, and I believe the wild community is a whole day. Of course there's going to be a couple people who kind of picked up on them or had an idea that they would be decent, but uh, the general gist of it was that these cards weren't going to be too powerful. But as it's turned out with the way the metagame shaped up post The Witchwood, a lot of these cards are actually really good. So number five for me is going to be Witching Hour. So this is a three mana druid card that will resurrect any friendly beast that has died this game. Turns out this works really well in a taunt druid shell uh, with Hadronix. It's very similar to the deck run in standard. It's just a taunt druid shell. You cut Spreading Plague, you don't run Malfurion, which is crazy. And basically the reason I personally didn't think and why a lot of people didn't think the deck would be that good is just you're losing Spreading Plague and Malfurion, two of the best cards in any defensive druid deck. But it turns out when you fill your deck with cards like Death Lord, you don't really care too much. If you have a bunch of taunts, so you can just keep on rising over and over again. Like the deck utilizes cards like Primordial Drake and the Lich King as well. So you're resurrecting huge taunts when you do get it with um, Witching Air. But another good reason why it's very powerful is you have Master Oakheart to tutor out Hadronix, and you also have Poison Seeds and Naturalize in Wild to activate Witching Hour after one Hadronix has died. So you can go, you know, Master Oakheart plus Naturalize on turn 10, clear Hadronix, get a board of 6 taunts, and then after that what you can do is play Witching Hour plus Poison Seeds to clear your opponent's entire board, and Hadronix's Death Rattle will go off before Poison Seeds activates. So instead of getting 2-2s two if you have a full board already, you'll get a bunch of taunts. And it's just a really sweet way to activate it, and it's actually a really strong combo in wild because what you can do is run death lords and nizoth in wild which means you have a lot more consistency with hadronics and with double witching hour it means you have so much sticking power into the late game that you can even take games to q block to fatigue and so win uh and you know, speaking of fatigue, cards like Naturalize and Death Lord really help you with that. Uh, with Witching Hour and with Nizoth, you get a ton of Death Lords, which means that you really can interrupt combo decks. So basically any other Druid deck uh, outside of Jade Druid, you can really just beat them up um, by pulling their combo pieces like Aviana or Kuhn, which is very nice. It's also useful against any form of Arena deck or any deck that relies on just having specific cards. You pull stuff like Kazakus or any other combo cards out of your opponent's deck and render the combos useless with Taunt Druid. Next up at number four is going to be the Rush Package. So this is just Town Crier, a card that I was really hyped with and was in my top five, but alongside it, Militia Commander and Darius Crowley as well. So these three cards together actually, uh, I feel like kind of tied together Patron Warrior. Um, you can actually add in Warpath as well if you'd like, because that was a very, very important card for Patron Warrior as well. Um, probably even more important than Rush Package, so I'll just throw that in there. The the Rush Package plus Warpath for Patron Warrior. I don't think any of these standalone are really nuts, but I think all together fitting into Patron Warrior, they really completed the deck uh, and made it viable right now. Like for me this season, if you guys follow my YouTube channel on, you know, day-to-day -day basis, you can tell that I did in fact go 22 and 2 to hit legend this season with Patron Warrior. And a large part of my games were just against Paladin and I did end up farming them just with Patron Warrior. And I would largely credit that to, um, you know, obviously older cards like Bloodraiser, um, and Whirlwinds, and just the patrons themselves, but also to the new cards. Um, Town Crier is a really good one drop that allows you to just kind of contest board right away. And then it gives you Militia Commander or Darius Crowley, which allow you to go ahead and just tackle down whatever your opponent plays on turn four or five. It's really sweet that way. And again, I will throw Warpath in there, even though it's not really part of the rush package. It is Echo. It's completely different. I don't think it's good enough in a lot of archetypes to kind of be a standalone card, but I think that it can fit into that Resurrect Patron Warrior with the rush package kind of combo. So throw four cards in a slot four, kind of weird, but I do so just because they all make Patron Warrior work, and I don't think uh, one of them really stands above the rest to do that. Number three might be kind of surprising, but it's Vicious Scale High. So it's just a two mana one three with Rush and Lifesteal, but this card isn't good because of its stat line. It's good because of its cost and the fact that when you're playing Quest Rogue and you activate the quest, there's a 5-5 five, five with Rush and Lifesteal, which actually ends up winning you a ton of your fast matchups. If you play super, super hard for your bouncing effects in the early game, um, sometimes you can just get the quest done in turn 5-7, to seven, so sometime around there. And um, with cards like Elven Minstrel, you tutor up minions. So a lot of the time, you will actually draw a scale hide before or right when you do finish your quest, which means if your life total is like, you know, 15 or below, really easy way to stabilize is if you have a bounce effect left over, even if you don't and you just have one scale hide healing for five sometimes ten is more than good enough to kind of get you over the hump of not dying before you develop all your five fives and just completely destroy your uh, opponent 
Even in the non-aggro matchups, uh, Vicious Galahide will allow you to keep your life total high and basically just snowball you to victory, allow you to, you know, seize board control, where before what you would have to do sometimes is just, like charge into your opponent's minions that you need to clear with your stone test boards or associate deckhands. Now you just use a scale hide. Works out a lot better and you can go face for five now with the uh, the boars or the deckhands, which is really, really sweet. And I actually think this is a huge upgrade to Quest Rogue and one of the reasons why I personally find it to be so strong right now in Wild. Um, myself, I think I peaked at rank 11 this season with it. Uh, 11 Legend, but it, it's not like a tier 1 deck or anything, it's just a deck that's very good in pocket metas, and Vicious Scale Hide kind of allows it to be able to do that, and um, even succeed outside of its pocket metas sometimes. I believe over like 20 games, I'm actually 10 and 10 against Paladin, and I would largely base it on Vicious Scale Hide just being a good card. Next up, number two is Azelina Soul Thief. This card completely surprised me, man. Uh, just honestly knocked all expectations out of the water. I honestly did not think this card would be very good at all. Uh, but it's actually kind of given us a new slow druid archetype. Um, one that's actually very interesting. It's kind of a steal your shit druid archetype, basically. What you do is you play Aviana, and then Kuhn to refresh your mana crystals. Then you play King Togwoggle, and then you play Azalina Soul Thief. And um, you give your opponent a ransom in their hand, and then you copy their hand. And yeah, basically what happens is, you know, you steal their deck, and then if they want to steal it back, well, you know, you have the ransom in your hand still, so you can just ransom it back, and then there you go, you get their deck. Basically, the idea behind the specific druid deck that runs this combo is, you run the same, you know, 23-24 card defensive package that most late-game druid combo decks do run, but this is your combo. Your combo is not to OTK them with Malagos, it's not to kill them with Jades, it's to steal their shit and win that way, which I personally think is really, really fun. Uh, this, you know, the decks have been used at very high ranks. CPUE's defended rank one with it, um, albeit not with very many games, but it does do very well in some matchups. The idea of the deck, though, is that you just draw basically your entire deck. Like, when you have the full combo in your hand, and say you have 10 cards in your hand and 6 cards left in your deck, and you have UI in hand, ultimate infestation in their face or whatever's on board, overdraw 5, because, you know, you're just going to do your combo anyways, and win that way. One thing about that deck, though, is it's very susceptible to Dirty Rats and Death Lords, which kind of sucks, but um, if you're not queuing into those, it's very, very good. That's probably the main problem with it, though, and um, it doesn't have an immediate win con, which sucks. So if you can't steal some good stuff from your opponent's deck, you're going to have to hope they fatigue out pretty quick, and you can win that way. But other than that, I think the deck's very interesting, and it's it's quite intricate, which is what I enjoy about it, and most panouts are very, very different, and rate Azalea as my number two underrated card, because I just didn't think this combo would be very good at all, and it's actually not bad. I, I don't think it's as good as Mally Druid, but I think it's decent and has some better matchups than Mally Druid. But I think overall, Mally Druid's still better, but uh, the Azalea Togawoggle Druid is still really, really fun, and I would recommend giving it a swing. I do have videos on it, and I actually played a mirror matchup that was, <laughs> it was a complete shit show. I would definitely recommend checking that video out. It's um, one of the better ones on my channel for sure. Very fun one to play though. That was just honestly one of the, the times that I've been confused in Hearthstone the most in like the past year. I was just kind of sitting there the game, like, you know, double thinking everything that I was, second guessing everything that I was doing. And, and lastly for me, the most underrated card of the Witchwood is just Gen Greymane. Uh, you know, myself and most of the Wild community didn't really think that the Odd or even Hero Powers would have too big of an impact on the Wild metagame. Well, turns out even Shaman and even Paladin are pretty good. Uh, I'll talk about even Paladin first. So even Paladin is not like super insane. Um, you get to utilize a lot of mechs, so you can play like Mech Warpers, uh, Neutrons, Piloted Shredder. It's kind of your package, and then um, you know there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can go with Dude Synergy, where you have Light Fuse Sagadon and um, Crystalline. I believe the, car the, the card's name is. Yeah, so you would have Life Use on uh, Crystal Line, Dry Gold Shaler, you can go for that package. Or you can opt for a little bit more of an aggressive one and make the deck a little bit more token-based, which is cool, and uh, that's the way I like to do it. Jam Sea Giants in the deck, spam a bunch of tokens, you know, refill the board over and over again. And basically just win games that way with a very strong early game. Uh, it's similar to Odd Paladin in that way, but instead of focusing on Dude Synergy within the 5 drops and 3 drops, you focus on just more strong minions in basically the 4 drop slot, and you get to use all Paladins overpowered 2 drops and run Call to Arms, which is a big uh, pro of that, obviously. Call to Arms is a very ridiculous card. I think Even Paladin is decent. Um, I'm not sold on Odd or Even Paladin being stronger than the just 30 card bought Agri Paladin decklist that runs like Nerubian Eggs, Fungal Mancer, um, stuff like that with Blessing of Mines, Blessing of Kings. Top style like that. So I'm not sold on either of the, the Baku the Baku or Gen Paladin decks being stronger than that, but um, you know, they're definitely good enough to get legend with, uh, trust me. They're all very strong decks because you're still playing Paladin. Uh, you know, the, the undisputed easiest class to play that has the highest win rate out of any other class just because it's so strong and so accessible. 
but I don't really think that, you know, it's an end be all the best deck for Paladin. That being said, it's still really good though. So if you do want to get Legend or play something with um, Gain, then I would recommend even Paladin as a deck. It's cool. Next up is a more interesting deck for me and the one that kind of makes this the most underrated deck uh, or underrated card for Gain Grieving is actually just Even Shaman. I, I was kind of blown away by how strong this deck was. It's really just ridiculous. It, it kind of lets you play Aggro Shaman, but actually play for board at the same time, which is kind of unheard of. So you get your total goal and you still get your four mana seven, seven, um, but you get thing from blows you get sea giants uh thing from blows in that deck are just <laughs> mind-blowingly stupid with a one mana hero power man trust me they are frustrating to play against it's literally corridor creeper but with taunt on it so it protects everything else which is just stupid I like pre-nerf quarter creeper. And you get crackles, you get your devolve still, maelstrom portals are still there, and you get the whole jade package. Jade claws, um, jade lightning, and Aya, all in the deck still. Which is just, ugh, it's dumb. I believe the current rank one player in North America actually used even shaman together, and I think he runs a corpse uh, taker package in the deck. Personally, I haven't tried it myself, but, um, you know, if you get rank one, you're probably doing something right. So, you know, shout out to whoever that is. It sounds cool. Um, I got 14, I think. Um, my peak was on YouTube, whatever I peaked with it at. I, I honestly just like threw together a build that I thought would be okay and just laddered with it for fun for like an hour or two. And I just kept on hitting the hero power button and I kept on winning with it, man. It's it's nuts. You just use your flame tank totems, your direwolves, and you just kill people. That's basically my, uh, my take from the deck is playing even shaman. Uh, what ends up happening is you just kill people and not much more goes into it than that. You just smash a hero power button, you develop on board, and when you need reach, you have crackle and j lightning. And then you go face. Um, you know, your opponent tries to hide over time. Well, there's your devolver, your spellbreaker, that happens. And if you don't have either of those, you probably have a crackle or j lightning. That being said, though, you don't know, lose on board too much because you still have flame tanks. You still have totem golems, you still have seven sevens. Still have the Shredders, and the list goes on and on. Basically, the deck's really overpowered, and um, it, it's not like the best deck in the game uh, for a while, but it's definitely up there. It's really, really good, and one of the new ones that popped up just being ridiculously strong and, and unpredicted, to be honest, which is the part of it that's the most exciting for me is there's, there's a deck that I couldn't think would be good right off the bat that, that actually is really good. Shout out to the Wild Community for good deck building. Uh, it's good stuff. But yeah, Gen's going to be my number one underrated card. Sorry for number four, I kind of um, just had the rush package in mind, but then as I was just filming this, I was like, eh, Warpath's pretty good too, I should probably throw that in there. Number four slot was basically just an ode to Patron Warrior and saying, hey, this is a deck again now because Paladin is rampant. <laughs> I love Patron Warrior. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Um, let me know what your top five underrated cards were for the Witchwood in the comment section. Appreciate that. And um, leave a like if you um, like the video. You know, smash the sub button too, and come and holler at your boy on Twitch. If you get Twitch Prime, smash that sub my way. Appreciate um, every sub I can get. Thank you so much, guys. Hope everyone has a great day. Thanks for checking out the video, and I will talk to you guys soon. Control out.